Good morning and welcome to day 29 of August vlogs. Only three days to go. Um, today is um, a bit of an organising day, a planning day for me really. Jasper's at home. Um, we have been and done the food shop this morning. I had to actually go in and do a proper food shop because I wasn't organised enough to get it ordered online. Um, although I've just done a little top up shop and then I'll do a proper a proper shop next week. Not that you need to know that much detail anyway. But it does mean that I've actually got a cup of tea because we didn't have any milk left. <laughs> um, but yeah, today's a bit of an organising day. I need to get my head around exactly what I want to get dyed for Perth weekend. Um, so with Perth weekend, I think I've mentioned a couple of times, but Perth Festival of Yarn itself are having a festival shop which has exclusive products from all well, not all, but a lot of different vendors are providing exclusive products which will be only available through the Perth Festival of Yarn website. Um, and I've got a product that I shared, um, my Colourway Squish, um, which will be available over there. But then I'm also planning on doing my own kind of personal shop update that week as well with things that I would have taken to Perth um, you know, just generally restocking a few things and sort of things that I would have taken to Perth and just having a big shop update that weekend. But having had quite a lot of time off in August and July, I'm really behind <laughs> on organising that all. So I need to plan what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the Winnie the Pooh minis back in stock. I'm going to have the Cornwall minis back in stock. I'm thinking about doing a new kind of sweet shop minis selection um, probably on 10 gram minis because that's what I've got most of available. Um, I haven't quite decided on that yet. Um, I'll be releasing my Halloween stuff um, and I'm also hoping to do um, some of the new bases. I'm thinking I'm going to try and put some of the BFL silk up. Um, I might dye some more colourways similar to the blue one that I dyed recently. So that kind of same tonal but with subtle speckles kind of thing so that it'll work really, really well for garments or um kind of more complicated shawls with lace and stuff like that so um that's my plan I need to get organized as to what I want for the Perth um yeah right I am just caking up some yarn hence the horrendous racket in the background um, but I am going to spend the evening um, with the sock machine. I'm going to try and get this skein of yarn um, or maybe one of the other ones. I don't know. There's two skeins of yarn that I've set aside to have a go with. Um, so maybe this one. Um, I'm going to get them, have a go at doing those two and see if I can duplicate my success from the other day. Um, whether I can or not, we'll find out, won't we? Um, but I've not recorded a lot today because it's been a really quiet day. I've literally been planning stuff for Perth and doing the food shop and kind of that kind of thing. Um, so most of today's video will be me and the sock machine. But I'll try and go into it in a little bit more detail and show you some of the different steps and stuff like that. Because I know um, there's a few of you who've responded to the video that I did before who are actually really interested in the sock machine and interested in kind of how it works and things like that. And I know there's a few of you out there who have one and haven't quite mastered it yet. Not that I can say I've mastered it yet, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail about it and share kind of a little bit more step by step. Um, so you can see the whole process. Hopefully that will be interesting for you all. Um, but yeah, I need to get this yarn caked up first. Okay, so I'm about to set up the sock machine. Excuse any background noise. Arthur is watching a little bit of Deadly, Deadly 60 before bed. And I just wanted to show you how I cast on and with... And really funny in it. A raccoon got stuck in the bin. A raccoon got stuck in the bin, yeah. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know what Deadly 60 is, it's um, a kids TV programme about kind of wild animals um, hosted by Steve Bakshaw and Arthur absolutely loves it. Anyway, um, this is the cast on bonnet and I'm going to use this to cast on with um, and I thought I'd show you how I do that. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Um, so basically you pick up these little hooks in between each of the stitches and you just put them over every other hook on here. I 
Okay. And you do that all the way around until you get about three quarters of the way around and then you'll need to turn the um, you'll need to turn the cylinder to be able to do it and that's when you kind of start casting on before you finished putting the sock bonnet on if that makes sense And you'll see that once I've got to this point, the needles are too low. So I have to kind of rotate it round a bit so that I can carry on getting it onto the needles. Right, and now I've got kind of three quarters of the way round, what I need to do is add my waste yarn. Um, so if I remember rightly, we literally just put the waste yarn in and it needs to go to the right of the needle with the first stitch on. And then we just keep going round. And this should, you might need to hold your waste yarn a little bit for the first few. This should then start casting on as I finish putting the remaining stitches over the hooks. Excuse the sound of the washing machine in the background. Always so professional here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And there we go, that should now be cast on. You just have to watch on this first row that we don't lose any stitches and go quite slowly. Make sure that my yarn is in the right place, so the tension. And now we're actually starting on to the proper first row, not just the cast on row. And that's it, it is much, much easier with the sock bonnet. Um, I don't know whether you can buy sock bonnets, I, I, and I don't know if they come with come with it normally. I just know that mine included two sock bonnets. Um, oh, see, look, here we go. Look, we've skipped some stitches now because I rushed. But what we need to do here is just put them over alternate needles. Now, that was my fault. That's because I've forgotten to put the weight on the thing. There we go, I've added the weight now. Um, so that should stop the issue. So we're gonna have a slightly dodgy one, but this is why you start with the waste yarn anyway. There we go, just stick that around the back. Right, now that I've got the weight on, that should be less of an issue. Oh, except this has all come off now. <laughs> Comment down below if Mummy is terrible at making socks. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> right, now we've got a fair bit of waste yarn cranked on. I'll go back over that mistake that I made early on. Um, you can kind of see it just in here um, where I've ended up with loads. It, the machine basically slipped the stitches because the tension wasn't right. Um, and that's because I completely forgot to put the weight on while I was casting on. You put it, you do about three quarters of it, three quarters of the cast on, and then you're supposed to put the weight on. Um, and I forgot. <laughs> and that's why we had that issue with the tension there. Um, but as you can see, now I've corrected the issue. It doesn't ha hasn't happened again. And it will happen occasionally throughout. You get slip stitches every so often if your tension goes a bit wonky if your cake moves or something like that so it is really 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 sensitive to that kind of thing um, but now we're going to add in the colorway that we're going to be using 
So we're going to be starting off with this colourway tonight and what we need to do is swap out the waste yarn which at the moment is just um, some light grey and all I need to do is just cut this with a little bit of tail and then swap these around. Um, so let me just move you a minute if you can see there's a little feeder thing here um, the yarn just goes through that one then we've got see if I can get you visible see if you can see it here we go you've got a little thingy here um, and it just has to clip around this little metal hook and go underneath the guide there and then, if I move you again, excuse me a second. Arthur, can you stop holding the tripod, please? Thank you. Um, then it's got to go in through this guide. And once again, it just needs to go to the right of that needle. And I'm just going to leave that in there for a minute. And hopefully, this will work. Okay. Mm. And there we go, we should have the new colour starting. And again, we just need to keep a little eye to make sure it doesn't slip any stitches um, at the first point and make sure that we've got the yarn cake in the right place for tension. Um, but that's it. It's relatively simple once you've got the hang of it and once you've kind of worked out what you need to do. Do it yet. Right, you're kind of upside down now, so I've got no idea if this is going to be recording at the right angle, but I wanted to show you another important thing. Um, this is the bottom of the cast on bonnet, and I did have the weight hooked on here um, to pull the weight. Now that this has got a bit of length to it, I'm going to use the buckle. And the buckle just clips in yeah. on like this. Have I got it the right way up? No. It's heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. Be careful with it, buddy. It is wet. Um... The buckle. You have to get the buckle the right way up because if you get it the wrong way up, then it just slips off when you put the weight on. There we go. Um, so there we go. That just then hooks on there, and then you can move that up as you need to increase the tension higher up. I hope that was visible. And the other little thing that I find is that I do need to just give it a little bit of a tug underneath occasionally to make sure that that, st that tension stays in place even with the weight on underneath sometimes you'll notice the stitches rising up I mean that might have been the sock yarn that I was using before I might find that this doesn't do it as much um, but yeah I found that if I just gave it a little tug it would drop the stitches right down because they need to be sat right at the bottom of the needles um, for it to work properly Um, now you can see I've just had some slip stitches. See where this yarn's not been picked up properly by the machine. And that was because my cake of yarn jumped. Um, obviously where I'd caked it up, there was a little catch in it um, or something. And the cake of yarn actually sort of jumped a little bit. So the tension changed. Um, but you can rescue it. It's not too bad. Um, you just need to hook hook this bit round every other stitch um, and then it should pick it back up again and it shouldn't be too noticeable from the inside, the outside of the sock when the sock's finished. Does that make any sense at all? Right, there we go. And then, in fact, if I keep you on, I'll show you as we go round. Just give that a little tug. As we come round. Arthur, can you not touch the arm, please? Yeah. This is the bit that's obviously been a bit dodgy. And hopefully, as we come round, it will pick that all up and catch it all at the back. And it won't really be that noticeable. Um, and a few rows later, you can just see this bit here is where we had those slipped stitches. Um, so it's kind of picked them all back up and hopefully on the outside of the sock, you shouldn't really be able to notice them. Right, so I finished cranking this one. I've got about, I don't know, this much left, probably 
a bit less than 20 grams. Um, I'm going to keep hold of this because I'm going to use this for the cuffs. I'm going to use a contrast for the heels and toes, um, but I want to use that for the cuffs. Um, so now I just need to take it off the machine. Um, so all I'm going to do, um, there might, I think there's a way of actually casting things off properly, but because I know I'm just going to be picking up the stitches, I'm not too worried. So I'm literally just going to cut the yarn um, and then I'm just going to keep winding it and it will kind of pop off as you can see gonna drop, and then it drops on the floor and there we go one completed sock tube that's the word I want isn't it um I probably should have um removed the weight before I just let it fall off the machine <laughs> but um you learn don't you um Anyway, yeah, and then all I'm going to do to separate the sock bonnet from the main part of the sock is I'm literally just going to cut this waist yarn and then just unpick it um, so that I can separate them. Um, because at this, that's what the waist yarn is for, really. I don't need it for anything. Um, so, yeah, that's all I'm going to do is just cut that and separate them. In fact, what I'll probably do to make it easier is just cut all the way around. Being careful not to cut the sock bonnet. <laughs> and then I'll just unravel that off the sock bonnet and I can use the sock bonnet again. <laughs> 